Uh, do you think, hey. do you attribute uh, autism to the prevalence of uh, seed oils in the diet? Oh, hugely. I mean, I have a chapter in the new edition of Deep Nutrition. I call, uh, it's called Brain Killer, how vegetable oil is your brain's worst enemy. And it truly is. And there's many ways that um, the mechanisms of how seed oil promotes inflammation and disrupts our growth that uh, are right in line with what happens with autistic children's neurological development. Um, and, you know, some people call um, Alzheimer's autism of the elderly, right? Because there's similar findings there that have to do with infl inflammation and seed oils promote inflammation. So it, absolutely it's related and, and absolutely it's you can do something and like every day that you don't eat seed oils before you have a child is before you conceive is a good is a good thing. Um, and it's both men and women actually really, you know, matters. Like you said, in real time, it, um, it doesn't possibly take quite so long for for guys to experience the benefits because um, it's more in real time. Um, but uh, so uh yes so absolutely i do and, and you know this isn't to blame mothers for saying you should have known this this is you know to put it out there that there is something you can do and if anybody's to blame it's the american heart association because they're the ones that have been pushing seed oils uh right and um and and you know not physicians i mean it's i don't know if it's really the doctor's responsibility to like it's really hard to to learn the truth about nutrition. It's not like somebody asked me once, is it like just a little bit more learning that doctors have to do? Or is this a really big deal? I thought it was a really smart question. It's not like doctors are just like so lazy that we we don't even read the basics about nutrition. No way. We are so indoctrinated and it's so dangerous as a doctor to you know, actually dispense healthy dietary information, I couldn't practice anymore. And and like that kind of is one of your other questions, right? You were asking like, what do people say about it? So I know that like uh, other doctors think I'm crazy, right? Because I'm not prescribing statins all the time. Because I tell people with type 2 diabetes that there is something you can do to reverse your diabetes. And it, it you know, it's not all about carbohydrates either. It's, it's about these seed oils, big, hugely, huge huge um, influence. And um, so, yeah, so like that was part of why it, it was hard for me to continue in regular practice because I was expected to cover for my colleagues and their patients would come in and they would uh, need refills on diabetes prescriptions or cholesterol drugs. And I just felt like morally obligated to say, hey, you know, there's another way at least. and like some people wanted to hear it and some people didn't that's fine but if my colleagues had had their way i wouldn't say that right and and that was hard because like i respected these people but they just couldn't go down the rabbit hole with me you know right. and get on board so that that was tough yeah i can imagine uh, it's as with a lot of these things where we've been told one thing, indoctrinated, and the establishment is behind something that's wrong, uh, it takes a lot to move people off that position, whether it's political, whether it's uh, nutrition, you know, who knows what it is. In, in a lot of cases, especially politically, I've seen it takes a, like a, a traumatic event. Uh, where finally, finally, you can no longer be in denial that the model that you have in your head isn't providing you the value that you need, the utility as it interfaces with reality. And uh, it, it's hard when you see people who you otherwise respect and, and know are smart people and are kind and caring and, and don't want to be bad people and, and aren't, you know, but may still be enthralled to a outdated model. Uh, of perceiving the world, uh, whatever the domain may be. And, uh, you know, the, there's a reason why, you know, the pioneer has an arrow in the back, right? Like you're out there on the frontier and it's dangerous and not everybody's with you. And it's fraught with danger and criticism and, and risk. And, you know, it, that's probably why people don't go there. 
That's why people don't go there. Right, right. But do you have do you have yes, hope? Yes, especially. Well, go ahead. Well, I, I sort of do. Yes, I mean, I was gonna say especially in medicine because we are always like there's always the sharks swirling the the lawyers, right? Yeah. And the insurance companies and the medical board and all these people who are trying to. Um, I mean, if you if you step outside of a line, you can get dinged by any one of them. And there's all these pressures that our society puts on doctors to just conform. And I've heard from, you know, people that had to engage with our own doctors now in the radical, regular medical system. And a lot of the time they just feel like they're robots. You know, that I've spoken with doctors who felt like they were asked to be robots and they just couldn't do it. So they had to find another way of practicing. And, um, you know, I, 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 I have hope for, these alternative ways of practicing, right? There are a lot of doctors now who are, I'm going to say enlightened because it's really the word, around nutrition and um, and have gone out on their own in one fashion or another. But it's not always easy. There's not a lot of business models. Like you can't necessarily just be in the regular insurance uh, rat race. Right. Um, and so it requires like cash payments and stuff, which some folks like myself are just kind of queasy about doing it that way. But um, I mean, other, otherwise you can't do it at all, you know, but um, you know, I'm hoping that there will be more of actually the solution that my current boss considered, which my current boss is a, is like the, the son of the CEO of a company. What is, what does that mean? That means I'm a company doc that, the employees of the company don't need to have health insurance and I can help them. In, and I can help in them as house long doctor as they instead of in house counsel. Yeah. In interesting. Interesting concept. Con it's, yeah. it's it's yeah. concierge ish, I guess. It is concierge, yeah. but uh, like for free. So uh, right. you know, so right. Right. they just pay me a doctor's salary, right? But instead I'm delivering, you know, much better quality than they can get in the insurance system. That's tremendous. I have a colleague, Dr. Phil Ovadia. He is a heart surgeon. He's done over 3000 heart surgeries, but he's made it his mission now to keep people off the operating table. And he's very focused on uh -huh. metal. Oh, you know, Phil. Oh, okay, great. And, uh, yeah. he, you know, he's, he's doing something similar now too. Um, you know, trying not to fly around the country, cracking people open who are, who are sick, but try to keep people from getting sick in the first place. And, you know, unfortunately, well, amazing. Lovely. I support it a thousand percent. Unfortunately, that doesn't help with the widening, the widening divide in some cases. Um, but writing yeah. does putting out books like this, yeah. fat burn fix. There we go. Oh, I don't have the dust jacket here, but deep nutrition. Cause I went deep into this yeah. one. The dust jacket got lost along the way. Um, tremendous books. Uh, I love your perspective and your outlook. Uh, I love the energy that you brought to your work. I think that you didn't say, you know, I got into medicine to make a bunch of money says it all. You got into medicine to figure out how to help yourself and now others. And that, that, that fuel is probably what, you know, helps keep you moving forward in face of people calling you Nazi and, uh, you know, some sort of evil, you know, bad genetic manipulator and whatnot. When really all you want people to do is to like eat sauerkraut and like eat the meat off the bone and like have a fresh salad from your garden without a bunch of shitty salad dressing on it. It's not, it's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. Uh, and, and the fact that we have to return to these eternal truths is also mirrored in other elements of our lives, right? In philosophy, like go back to the Aristotelian excellences. They've been there for 2,500 years. It's not brand new information. We just have to return to it. So Congratulations to you on that. And thank you very much for coming on the show. I have a million more questions. Maybe we can do this again sometime. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Right. Kate, Catherine Shanahan. Sorry, I keep calling you Dr. Kate. I don't know why. Dr. Shanahan. Uh, thank you very much. That's my brand. That's the Perfect. Okay. Thank you for inviting me onto your show. Thank you. Yeah, Pleasure. It's, it's been wonderful. Guys, here's what it is, everybody. Uh, the book, Deep Nutrition. Get this one. Get the Fat Burn Fix. Uh, also, we didn't get to it, but we'll talk about it at some point. Uh, Zero Acre, please check that out. It